Today I'm going to go over how I made this translucent glowing shader in Arnold and Cinema 4D, so let's jump into it. I'm going to start off with a brand new Arnold standard surface material. Open up the material shader network. Click the standard surface material, navigate down to transmission, and turn up the weight value to 0.95. Now I'm going to drag this material onto my mesh so I can preview it in the IPR window. As you can see, the shader looks pretty much just like standard glass at the moment. Let's drop in a C4D noise node into the network. Connect the C4D noise to the Arnold shadered output. I want to be able to see it in the IPR window so I can adjust it. I'm going to raise the global scale value to 500. Up the contrast just a little bit to 35 or 40% so we get some stronger white and black values in our noise. Next, let's drop an RGB ramp into the shader network. You can connect the C4D noise to the ramp input. Remember to change the ramp type to custom. Then connect that ramp to the transmission color. And then if we connect our standard surface shader to the final output, you'll see that our transmission color has been changed by the noise. Now I'm just going to simply add some color to the ramp. Very light colors are going to work best for this. The, the closer your color is to white, the more transparent it will be. So keep that in mind as you're picking colors for your gradient here. We want to maintain that transparency, but just add a nice noisy colored effect to our transmission parameter. Then select the standard surface node again, navigate down to transmission, and increase the dispersion value to 0.1. Now you'll see we're starting to get a little bit more of that rainbow effect we had in the original shader inside the glass texture. Next, add a curvature node to the shader network. Connect the curvature node to the final output. What the curvature node does is it selects for the most curved portions of your geometry. So the more curved your geometry is, the whiter it will look in the IPR window. We're trying to create a map for the most curved portions of our geometry, so you can adjust these parameters in order to get a nice defined edge around the corners of the geometry. At least that's what I'm trying to do in this instance here. So depending on your situation, your parameters are going to be probably much different than mine. But the idea is that we're trying to select for the curved portions of the object. And then we're going to use this black and white mat that we've created to mix two shaders together. Next, add another standard surface shader to the network. Connect the new standard surface shader to the output. Under main, change the material preset to metal. Then change the base color to something other than white. Add a mix shader to the network. Take our glass material and pipe it into shader 1. Next, pipe the metal material into shader 2. And then you're going to take the curvature node and pipe that into the mix parameter. And what this does is it layers the two shaders together. So we should be seeing our metal shader on the edges of our geometry now. Add another RGB ramp to the network. Connect the curvature node to the ramp, and then the ramp to the output. Change the ramp type to custom. And then you can clamp down the white value of the ramp in order to intensify the curvature node map. This is just going to clamp down our white value so we get a little bit stronger of a map between the two shaders. Then reconnect the mix shader node to the Arnold shader output. Now you should be seeing more of the metal texture on the edges of your geometry. Next, I made a couple color changes to the ramp that's going into the transmission color parameter. And then I selected the ramp that's connected to my curvature node and clamped down the white values just a bit more, making the metal texture a little more intense. Now we're going to work on adding that glow effect to our shader. So add another standard surface shader to the network editor. Navigate down to the emission tab and increase the weight value to 1. Then select the curvature node and the ramp it's plugged into and duplicate them. Add another mix shader to the network. Select the first mix shader node that we made and plug that into the shader 1 value in our new mix shader node. Then select the new standard surface shader where we turned on the emission and plug that into the shader 2 value. Then select the ramp that's connected to the duplicate curvature node and plug that into the mix value of our new mix shader. Then connect that mix shader to the Arnold shader output. 
Now we can see that the emission is coming through in the same places that our metal shader was in the previous setup. So what we're gonna have to do is make some alterations to the ramp node and curvature node so that the emission is not fully covering all of the metal shader we added previously. I selected the ramp and unclamped the white value. Then I selected the curvature node and increased the radius parameter to nine centimeters. This is giving me a slightly different effect than the original curvature node setup. Finally, I selected the standard surface node that had the emission turned on and changed the emission color to a teal blue. Now you can see that our shader is looking pretty similar to what I had in my original animation. If you found this video helpful, throw me a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.